Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Astros, and today I'm recapping Game 7 of the regular season, uh, the first road game of the season for the Astros as they go into Los Angeles to beat the Angels 9-6. to The Astros' offensive last year finally showed up. Nine runs, 12 hits, they looked good. I mean, this could be the wake-up call that we kind of needed, especially since one of our Astros who's been struggling really got rolling on offense tonight, but I'm going to get to that when I get to the offensive portion. I'm going to start with pitching. Lance McCullers made the start, and he looked good until he didn't, if that makes any sense. Rolled for three innings, and then blew up in the fourth. Three runs, and I hate saying blew up because I love Lance McCullers Jr., but boy, if our if he's going to be our ace for the next couple weeks until Verlander comes back... This could be a bit of an issue if he pitches like this more. He's got to have more of that Game 2 McCullers and not Game 7 McCullers if we want any real chance at succeeding. Um, after he got pulled, b came in. v baby. He rolled for a couple innings. I believe he pitched to two. And if you want to really talk about his night, it really depends on which stats you prefer. If you are a control and whip guy, he didn't really have a great night. If you are the absolute bottom line, all you care about is runs, he had a good night. Uh, two innings, I believe he walked three. I don't believe he gave up a hit, but three base runners in two innings isn't great, but he didn't allow a run, which I think deep down inside we all care mostly about runs. So I guess what I should have said is more along the lines of how important is the whip statistic to you? To evaluate his night. Uh, I view it very important, but at the same time, it was two innings, so I think he had a very good night. Belak could be a good reliever for us this year, and given the bullpen, boy oh boy do we need a good reliever. Uh, after Belak, Abreu came in, and he looked bad, but he gets a pass because I don't know if he split his thumb open, if it was that God, that sounds terrible. Um, sorry. I don't know if it was that or a blister or if maybe he just nicked himself somehow, but his thumb was hurting him. His thumb was bleeding, which prompted him to get pulled. So even though he got a run charged to him tonight, I'm not going to put a lot of stock into it because he had a thumb injury, which, you know, kind of hard to <laughs> fairly evaluate someone when they're pitching with an injury. Uh, Paredes came in, and I am saying that right for once. I'm very happy. <laughs> I've butchered that a lot. He looked fine. Um, didn't look great like he has. He was touching 97, 98, though, which, boy, if he can get a few of his off speeds, if he can figure out and tweak those to be perfection, which I think he can, and he can get that fastball around 97, 98 at its peak, <sighs> You could be looking at a top 10 future reliever. I'm just going to put that out there. I might be getting ahead of myself, but he looked he looked okay. And if he can get those pitches to where they need to be, his fastball's got it. It's got a bit of movement, and it can be fast. If he can get his off speeds, he could be really, really good for this bullpen. Uh, Scrub got his first save of his career at the major league level. I believe it's like his 10th or 12th career save overall in all, the le in all levels of baseball, but that's not important. He got his first save at the major league level, so good for him. Um, <laughs> kind of a funny little story that I'm going to go off on a tangent for for a second. Uh, after he gave up two base runners in the ninth, and we fired up a guy in the bullpen, we fired up Bailey, and I am a massive Astros fan. Obviously, I'm doing this. And I just saw 63 on his jersey, and I didn't really see much of his face, and I honestly asked myself, who is that? That is the state of our bullpen at this point. We, boy, we need our injured players to get back. And I don't want to say, we need them back as soon as possible because I don't want to rush it, because the margin of error that you have in a 60-game season is so small you have to play it super carefully, so I don't want to rush them back super quick and maybe get them injured and kind of doom the whole season, but we need them back as soon as safely possible, if that makes any sense. 
Now, on to the offense. Springer started the night with a hit, and <laughs> if you can call it that. Uh, infield hits are still hits, just, as, just ask Ichiro Suzuki. Um, Springer woke up tonight, though. He had two hits. He had, I believe, three RBI. I could be wrong. He had a walk. He had a sack fly. Springer might have finally woken up. Please, Springer have woken up. We need that good production out of our one spot. Altuve was pretty okay. Uh, he got two RBIs basically just because he got hustle. Like, Altuve is so fast. Uh, made it to first to avoid the double play in the first. Or was it the... No, it was the, like the third or fourth inning. Yeah, second inning. My bad. Uh, my memory's great when I'm really tired, as you can clearly see. Uh, Altuve just... He saved two outs just by sprinting on the fielder's choices, which... I know a fielder's choice for an RBI isn't great. You know, that's not like the, ooh, it's not going to make a great play. But Altuve's got hustle, and it's great to see his knees and legs at full strength because after the 2018 season and the start of 2019, I genuinely had concern that he might never get to be there again. Tucker, Tucker had his coming out party tonight, guys. Um, where are all the Tucker haters now? Three for five. He looked great. Four RBIs, a stolen base, and a double. Kyle Tucker this season is looking... He's looking great. He's looking like he is easily going to be a starting outfielder next year. Which, if he can keep producing at this rate, that is great news for the Astros. Since all three of our outfielders, our main outfielders, uh, Springer, Brantley, and Reddick, are free agents. Tucker stepping up is great. Because now, instead of having three massive voids... You could only have two, and if you bring back one of them, you might only have one, which I feel like it is incredibly unlikely that we lose all three in the off season. I think it's, we're going to bring back one of them, and if I had to put money on it, I'd probably say Springer, just because he's a homegrown product, and everyone likes to keep their homegrown products. Everyone loves that. So I'm, I have to imagine if we bring any of the three back, it's probably going to be Georgie Boy. And George with Tucker out there in the outfield next year, that would be a very that'd be a very okay duo. And then maybe toss a straw out there in center field just because he's so fast. He'd be like a slightly faster Jake Marisnik. <laughs> I miss Jake Marisnik so much, side note. Uh, he woke up. Brantley is just... Brantley's a hitting machine this year, guys. I mean, he is... It's only been seven games. He's batting over 400. I believe his on base is almost at 500. Brantley's looking really good. I'm not going to go too much into it yet because it's only been seven games. But if he's still above 400 at, say, game 15 or 16, I'll probably make a separate video talking about if Brantley could bat 400 for the year and if we could see him do that. So just know that's coming if he still does it for the next couple of weeks. But I just wanted to touch on that briefly right now. Uh, still on the offense, Correa, man. Correa's looking like an MVP. He's looking great offensively. He's getting his pl uh, plate discipline up. He's looking great defensively. He's got a cannon there, and that's just... Was it three clutch double plays tonight? I think it was three clutch double plays by Correa tonight of just firing that ball to first. Correa, I kind of forgot about it because he didn't play a lot last year. Correa's got a cannon at shortstop. And I think people kind of undervalue him because he was injured a bit last year. I think he's easily a top five shortstop in the game. I'm not going to say something ridiculous like he's the best or second best or third best, but I think he's still a top five player at shortstop. I think people have kind of forgotten that because the past year he was a little bit injured and the year before that he was a, maybe a touch lackluster, but he was still pretty good. Um, that's about it for the offense. I did want to mention one thing, though, because I don't want to just pump the tires of the Astros when they're doing good for five to ten minutes. And I did want to bring this up. I didn't like Dusty Baker's move of pinch hitting straw for Reddick with the bases loaded with one out. I know it didn't really hurt because I believe Tucker then got the double, but I didn't like uh, Baker putting in straw. And I really love Miles Straw. I think he's awesome. I think he's super fast. He's super fun to watch. Uh, because he's fast, he's pretty good defensively. 
but I didn't get putting in a contact guy in bases loaded one out. That is a high power, not really a power, but a fly ball guy like Redick, who also has a touch of power and a bit of pop in his bat, who can, if he doesn't actually get like a normal hit or maybe a home run, he's at least going to put it in the sky in the outfield and hopefully allow the runner to tag. And again, it didn't end up hurting us because we still scored two runs and we still won the game, so I'm not going to go too hard on Dusty for it, but I didn't like putting Straw in uh, with the bases loaded one out. And you could probably argue that it was because he didn't want a double play to be there, and I'll give you that, but at the same time, Reddick isn't slow, so I didn't really love putting Straw in, but that's about my only real criticism tonight. Uh, I feel like he pulled McCullers pretty well. I think he pulled Abreu maybe a touch late, but still, I mean, with an injury like that, it's kind of minute to the point where you might not think about it until production starts going down, and then you realize, oh, that's actually affecting him. I've actually been pretty pleased with Dusty Baker this season overall. And before I get rambling too far, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and go Strohs.